Hey everyone, Desi is here with another video, and in this one, I am going to be taking out the druids in the West Common Lands. This is not very far from the guard toll post, that's just a little ways down here. But I figured I would just record taking out some of the druids at this camp because I've been kind of spending a lot of time here and it's been a lot more lucrative financially than the guard post. These druids drop fine steel weapons, they drop gems that sell for like 5 to 7 platinum, and the best part of it all is there is an indifferent vendor right here who will gladly trade with a dark elf like me. So. Without further ado, let me um, just kill the skeleton. There's a lot of ads that kind of run around and try to try to kill me, but you know they're like level five and they give free bone chips, so there's really nothing to complain about there. I did get the call of bone spell, so that is very nice. I'm a skelly now, and let me uh, screaming tear this guy and hope to God that it re doesn't resist. All right, good. And then I usually like run my pet back a little bit just to gain some space from the other druid and then I'll send my pet over and I'll feign death. Here, I'm gonna... Oh wow, um, I'm screaming terror though of werewolf too. I'm just gonna, okay. Put dooming darkness on the druid. And then I'm gonna fear the druid. The werewolf is smezzed right now. The fear resisted. I'm going to reapply Screaming Terror on the werewolf. And I don't have the Invoke Fear spell, the 7 tick one. Just because I haven't picked it up yet. And that's on me. But Venom of the Snake has been really nice. Looks like my pet's a little bit low in health. He's probably going to pass away. Um, it is what it is, you know? I, d I just don't want my pet to attack the werewolf. Yeah, he's gone. Rest in peace, pet. Reapply fear. Um, no, yeah. Let's keep... Oh, nice. Looks like that guy's taking out the other druid. Which... Hopefully I'm not stealing his camp. Okay, I'm gonna screaming tear this werewolf and... Drop the aggro there. Reapply fear on this guy. Oh, nice. Thank you, brother. Um. Oh. He stole the kill. Damn. Okay. <laughs> I guess, uh, I guess I didn't get the experience for that pull. Alright. We are back in action. All right, we are back in action. Still metting a little bit. I had to make a new pet. Let's take out this skelly. The druids are back up. It was a simple misunderstanding with the other guy. He he was passing through, happened to get aggro and take out the druid. Um, you know, it's all in the past now. Forgive and forget, you know. <laughs> anyway, um... Yeah, I'm gonna try to split this camp again, or break the camp. It's always it's always sketchy. I this just, this always gives me a little bit of fear in the pit of my stomach trying to uh, cast screaming terror on one of them because if one of them resists, they're both on me. They're both casters. They can root me in place. They can put a dot on me or two dots at the same time if they both cast one. Also, if I feign death while they're casting, the uh, cast is still happening so it'll break my feign death which breaks my cover so these guys are nasty druids are nasty similar to trents for the trents at least you could usually single pull them but these guys are too close together for that to be a possibility as well as the fact that they're higher level they have more mana more health and maybe some more buffs and spells as well so let's pray again and hope that this does not resist okay good i'm gonna send my pet back a little bit like i said i like to make a little bit of space send my pet over to the druid feign death to break aggro for the druid in the back 
Put Dooming Darkness on. Perfect. And then Fear. Beautiful. I like to put Venom of the Snake on. It's a super nice dot. Does a ton of damage very quickly. And ah, that resisted. And I also, if my health is considerably low from Lich, I will definitely life tap. That'll heal me up pretty nicely. I'm going to reapply Fear so it doesn't break. And it looks like he is getting uncomfortably close to the other druid. So I'm going to Screaming Tear the other druid. And try to burn down this druid. I should have enough mana to take both of them out. And so that's just something that we're going to have to manage with. And I'm going to reapply Screaming Terror. And it looks like the druid has a damage shield, so my pet is taking considerable damage. As well as the fact that he might have a dot on as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to fear the other druid. And then Dooming Darkness. Oh. Oh, that is... Oh, that is so unfortunate. Okay, I think I made decent time. I think they're both casting their own thing. But the problem is that I am pretending to be dead right next to their spawn point. Right next to where they usually stand, so... And I'm dotted. I really put myself in a pickle here. And that's the thing about this camp is there's a lot of situations where I'm going to first cast the Lich off just so I for sure hope that I don't die but it's it looks like there's about 12 seconds left on the tick this is really really sketchy um that's kind of the the risk of this camp is one thing can happen wrong or uh, a fear doesn't land or the dot does a little too much damage, or the pathing's off. Oh my god, I can't believe I did not die there. But I'm probably gonna die. Regardless. <laughs> this is a tough one to be in. I'm kind of put on the spot, because I'm recording this. And I, I'm trying to think of something I could do right now where I don't have to just wait it out to med passively without actually meditating <sighs> sometimes there um, there comes a point in life where you have to make decisions that are life or death and right now I am being faced with with one of those decisions and it's probably one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make in my life Standing up and running away and trying to survive. The choice to stand, fight another day, not to play dead, not to hide, but to, to rise up and face the world for what it is. It's time to, uh, it's time to stand up. Oh, <laughs> I didn't get aggro. Okay, um, that was um, not as bad as I thought it'd be, I suppose. It's time to med. We're going to kill one of these druids in this video, I promise you that. Joy to the druids in the common lands. Joy to you and me. All right, I, I got my new pet going. Um, I am just medding up for that last 30% of the mana. However, I do need to heal myself. So I do have a question to the other necromancers out there. What I've been doing is, if I'm kind of, if I have a, a discrepancy between my health and mana, if my health is severely lower than my mana, I will run around and find a random mob and life tap it just to try to balance it out. I think that just makes sense on a technical level to try to balance that, them out. The mana 
appreciates faster than the health does, so it's important to kind of keep them on the same track. And you're able to convert mana to health at a more efficient rate. So I think that makes sense to me, or do you just wait and... I, I don't know. I think I think that is how you do it. I think I'm just overthinking it. Anyways, we're almost ready to start. I can't wait to kill some druids and get some experience and maybe some fine steel weapons to sell to the merchant, get some platinum, buy some twink items from my other characters. That just sounds appealing to me. And fills me with joy to think about. I will say that. Nice sip of coffee in the morning. Nothing better than that. Honestly, there, there are few things that are nicer than having a morning off sitting and playing our request with a cup of coffee. There are a few things that, in my opinion, are better than that. He's back! Oh, that's a different guy. Why do these guys want to steal my druids, man? Whatever, brother. We're gonna take this guy out. I don't want him to steal the other druid. Honestly, it's for the better. He kind of broke the the camp for us. Although, they're probably going to die near the same time, so it's pretty much in vain, but we're going to kill this guy for sure. He's already almost dead. That makes me smile. We have a spirit tap. Whew. We did it, guys. We killed a druid. So we are nearing the inflection point of when at least one of these druids is going to spawn. My strategy is I have to immediately pull this other druid that spawns. Because if I don't, I, th I think their spawn points are between seconds. So maybe it's for the best if I actually just wait for both of them to spawn. Because then in that case... I wouldn't have to risk the fear pathing right through the spawn point regardless, and then I'll have to take on both at a time. So I think it would probably be the most responsible decision for my character's well-being to wait for both of them to spawn. <sighs> yeah, I think, I think that's the move. Let's see what happens. Yeah, they spawned seconds from each other. All right, let me screaming tear the one on the right. I always screaming tear the one on the right. No reason in particular. All right, now don't resist on me. You thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Lord have mercy. And I'm just gonna run even further away, honestly. I really don't want to risk the path going right into the other druid. Alright, Dooming Darkness. He is destroying my pet. Oh my god. So we're going to destroy him. Venom of the Snake. Life Tap. Yeah, I got to get that new fear badly. If it lasts twice as long, that would be super nice reapply fear seal moon whisper say hi to god for me. tell him i'm coming for him all right now i can time out these mobs a little bit better so I'm probably going to wait about two minutes or so, two or three minutes, because their spawn timer is around six minutes. I think it's six minutes on the dot. So then when I kill one of them, then there's that two to three minute gap between the other one. And when it gets into that point, <clears throat> excuse me, when it gets into that point, it is such an easy camp to maintain. Killing these guys one at a time is not trouble at all. I usually start it out with a fear just so they run away right away and they don't have any time to cast. And I usually actually start killing them right before they're able to cast any buffs on themselves. So they are a lot weaker usually once the camp is broken. 
all in all, that is the essence of this camp. Most of this video comprised of just trying to get to this point. So I think honestly that's more interesting than just seeing the camp right now in its broken state in, in its easy mode. It's kind of fun to see that, in my opinion, it's more interesting to see the challenges of trying to break a camp, seeing how other people can interface with the camp and affect it for the better or worse, as well as seeing the consequences of spells being resisted or the pathings of fear not going in our favor. And I think that is what makes playing a necromancer in Solo EverQuest Project 1999 very fun and very novel. There's always a new variable. So anyways, I will end the video here. I hope you all have an amazing day. Thank you for all the comments and support on the channel. We're nearing 400 subscribers, which is insane. Thank you very much. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I make videos like this one in different scenarios. I would really appreciate if you decided to subscribe to the channel. That would be awesome. I'd be happy to have you here. And if you also enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like on it. If you didn't like it, feel free to dislike it. Anyways, have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thank you very much. Goodbye.